can we play video number one? All open source AI must be banned because it threatens the profits of monopolistic tech companies. Number two. Universities should stop doing AI research because companies are much better at it. And the number three. To be honest, I don't care about all of this AI safety stuff. It doesn't matter. Let's focus on quantum computing instead. All right, let's give it up for our panelists. There are many, many current challenges with AI, of course, that we need to deal with. Deep fakes is very relevant this year because of elections and fraud and all sorts of other things. If you want to learn more about it, we have a deep fake demo where you can deep fake yourself back there and share your ideas for what to do about it. But that's not what we're going to talk about now because we are going to look a little farther into the future. The ultimate goal of AI from the beginning has always been to really solve intelligence and figure out how to make machines that can do everything humans can do, ideally much better. That is both exciting and terrifying. And I have taken the prerogative as moderator of sorting the panelists from uh, least worried to uh, most worried. I hope you feel I... Oh, wait, you switched. You should switch with Stuart. Please, please switch places. Yeah. Uh, uh, we're not si seating you by your deep fake opinions now, but by the, by the real ones. The, po the main goal we have here is not to have just yet another debate about whether we should worry or not, but rather to brainstorm about solutions in the MIT spirit, okay? And I have a very radical and heretical belief that you all actually agree on a lot more things than the average uh, Twitter user probably realizes. And we're going to see, to see if we can find some of those shared, um, those things that you agree on that we can all, all go out and do. So I'm going to warm you up just with some lightning round questions where you can basically just say yes and no or, or no, okay? So who is, who here, first question, are you um, excited about improving AI in ways so that, that, so that it can be our tool and really complement and help humans? Yes or no? Yes. 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 All right. Next question. Do you believe that AI in a few years will be a lot better than it is now? Yes. 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 All right. Now, okay, let's make it a bit harder. So if we define artificial general intelligence as AI that can do all, basically all cognitive tasks at human level or better, we, I think, do you feel that we already have it now? No. Absolutely not. No. No. Okay, four no's. Um, do you think uh, we're probably going to have it within the next thousand years? Maybe. Sure. Yes. Yes. Do you think we're probably going to have it within the next, did I say thousand or hundred? Thousand. Next hundred years? Maybe. Quite possibly. Very probably. Bearing nuclear catastrophe, yes. <laughs> All right. So if you were to put a number on like how many years we're going to need to wait until we have a 50% chance of getting it, would anyone, what, what year would you guess, guesstimate? Uh, not anytime soon. Mm -hmm. uh, decades. Decades? Uh, a lot less than I used to think. <laughs> OK, and you? 5.4. 5.4 years. Okay, a lot of precision there. So I think, I think you'll all agree we put them in the right order. And you should see that the level of alarm they have is, is correlated with how quickly they think we're going to have to deal with this. So clearly, if you have some of the world, if you have leading wor world experts who think it might happen relatively soon, we, we have to take seriously the possibility. So the question is, how do we make sure that this becomes the kind of tool AI that we can control so we can get all the upside and, and not the downside. One thing that has really struck me here in Davos, actually, is that the vast majority of what I hear people being excited about in AI, all medical breakthroughs, eliminating poverty, helping with the climate, making great new business opportunities, doesn't require AGI at all. So uh, I'm, I'm actually quite curious. 
If, if uh, somehow there were a way where we could just agree that, uh, we say, let's do all the great AI stuff, but maybe not do um, super intelligence until 2040 at the earliest or something like that. Is that something you all feel you could live with? Or, or do you feel that there is a great urgency to try to make something super intelligent as fast as possible? Uh, what, what would you, we all go in this direction this time. What would you say? Can live with that. Can, I, can you say it again? I can live with that. You can live with that. What about you, Stuart? Uh, and well, you can I, elaborate a bit more so this time. I, I, I could live with that, but it's not actually relevant what I think. What's relevant is what are the economic forces driving it. And if AGI is worth, uh, as I've estimated, 15 quadrillion dollars, it's kind of hard to tell people, no, you can't go for that. Jan, what about you? So first of all, there is no such thing as AGI because uh, we can talk about human level AI, but human, human intelligence is very specialized. So we shouldn't be talking about AGI at all. Uh, we should be talking about what kind of intelligence can we observe in humans and animals that current AI systems don't have. And, you know, there's a lot of things that current AI systems don't have that your cat has or your dog. And, and they don't have anything close to general intelligence. So the problem we have to solve is how to get machines to learn as efficiently as humans and animals. That is useful for a lot of applications. Uh, this is the future because we're going to have AI assistants that, you know, we talk to help us in our daily lives. We need those systems to have human level intelligence. So, uh, you know, that's, that's why we need it. Uh, we need to do it right. Daniela? Well, I'm with Jan, um, but let me first say that I don't think it's feasible to say we're going to stop science from developing in, uh, in one direction or another. And so I think knowledge has to continue to be uh, invented. We have to continue to push the boundaries. And this is one of the most uh, exciting aspects of working in this field right now. Uh, we do want to improve our tools. We do want to develop better models that are closer to nature than the models that we have right now. We want to try to understand nature um, in as uh, great detail um, as, as possible. And I believe that it's um, the, the feasible way forward is to start with the simpler organisms in nature and work our ways up to the more complex um, uh, uh, creatures like, like humans. Stuart? So I, had, I want to take issue with something. Uh, there are, there's a difference between knowing and doing. And that's an important distinction. But I would say, actually, there are limits on what is a good idea for the human race to know. Is it a good idea for everyone on Earth to know how, in their kitchen, to create an organism that will wipe out the human race? Is that a good idea? Daniela? No, of course not. Of course not. Right. So we accept that there are limits to what is, it, what is a good idea for us to know. Uh, and I think there are also limits on what is a good idea for us to do, right? Should we, um, should we build nuclear weapons that are large enough to ignite the entire atmosphere of the Earth? We can do that, but most people would say, no, it's not a good idea to build such a weapon. Okay, so there are limits on what we should do with our knowledge. And then the third point is, is it a good idea to build systems that are more powerful than human beings that we do not know how to control. Well, Stuart, I have to respond to you. Please um, do. And uh, I will say that every uh, technology that, uh, that has been invented has positives and negatives. We, um, we invent the knowledge and then we find ways to ensure that the inventions are used for good, not for bad. And there are mechanisms for doing that and there are mechanisms that the world is developing uh, for AI. With respect to your point about whether we have, um, we have machines that are more powerful than humans, we already do. We already have robots that can move with greater precision than you can. We have, uh, we have um, 
uh, robots that can lift more than you can. We have machine learning that can process much more data than we can. And so we already have machines that can do more than we can. No, but the, those machines are clearly not more powerful than humans uh, in the same way that gorillas are not more powerful than humans, even though they're much stronger uh, than us, and horses are much stronger and faster than us, but no one feels yeah. threatened by horses. I think there is a big fallacy in all of this. So first of all, uh, we do not have a blueprint for a system that would have human-level intelligence. It does not exist. The research doesn't exist. The science needs to be done. This is why it's going to take a long time. And so it's, if we are speaking today about how to protect against uh, intelligent systems you know, taking over the world, it's, or, or the dangers of it, regardless of what they are. It's as, we, as if we were talking in 1925 about the dangers of crossing the Atlantic at near the speed of sound when the turbojet was not invented. Um, you know, we don't know how to make those systems safe because we have not invented yet, uh, them yet. Now, once we have a blueprint for a system that can be intelligent, we'll have a blueprint probably for a system that can be controlled as well. Uh, uh, because I don't believe we can build intelligent systems that don't have controlling mechanisms inside of them. We do as humans. Evolution, uh, you know, kind of built, built us with certain drives. We can build machines with the same drives. So that's the first fallacy. The second fallacy is it is not because an entity is intelligent that it wants to dominate or that it is necessarily dangerous. It can solve problems. You can tell it, you can set it goal, the goals for it and it will uh, fulfill those goals. Um, and the idea that somehow the system is going to come up with, you know, its own goals and take, take over humanity is, is just preposterous. It's ridiculous. What is concerning to me is that the danger from AI does not come from any, like, bad property that it has, an evilness that must be removed from the AI. It's because it's capable. It's because it's powerful. This is what makes it dangerous. What makes a technology useful is also what makes it dangerous. The reason that nuclear reactors are useful is because nuclear bombs are dangerous. This is the same property. As technology progresses over the decades and the centuries, we have gotten access to more and more powerful technologies, more energy, more control over our environment. What this means is, is that the best and the worst things that can be, happen, either on purpose or accidentally, grow in tandem with the technology we built. AI is a particularly powerful technology, but it is not the only one that could become so powerful that even a single accident is unacceptable. There are technologies that exist today or will exist at some point in the future. Let's not argue about whether it's now in 10 years or twice. My kids are going to be alive in 50 years. And I want them to live in a world where not a single accident can be the end. If you have a technology, whether it's AGI, future nuclear weapons, bioweapons, or something else, you can build weapons or systems so powerful that a single accident means game over. And our civilization is not set up in how we currently develop technologies to be able to deal with technologies that don't give you retries. This is the problem. If we have retries, if we can try again and again and we fail and some stuff blows up and you know, maybe a couple of people die, but it's fine. Yeah, then I agree with Jan and Daniela that I think our scientists got this. I think Jan's lab will solve this. I think these people will solve it. But if one accident is too much, I don't think they will. But to that point and to the point that Stuart and, and Connor just, just mentioned, you can imagine an infinite number of scenarios when all of those things will go bad. You can do this with any technology. You can do this with AI, obviously. Sci-fi is full of it. Um, you can do this with turbojets. Turbojets can blow up. Um, there is lots and lots of ways to build those systems in ways that will be dangerous, wrong, uh, they'll kill people, etc. But as long as there is at least one way to do it right, that's all we need. And so, for example, there's technology that was developed in the past that was developed at the prototype level and then was decided that it should not be deployed because it would be too dangerous or uncontrollable. Nuclear-powered cars. People were talking about this in the 50s. There were prototypes. It was never deployed. Nuclear-powered spaceships, same thing. So there are mechanisms in society uh, for, to stop the deployment of technology if it's really dangerous and to not deploy it. But 
there are ways to make AI safe. I actually do agree that it's important to understand the limitations of uh, today's technology and understand and, and set out to develop solutions. And for some cases, we can get develop technological solutions. And so, for instance, we've been talking about a bias problem in machine learning. We actually have technology solutions, technological solutions to solve that. Um, we are uh, talking about size. We're talking about interpretability. Um, there, the scientific community is working on addressing uh, the the challenges with today's uh, solutions and also uh, seeking to invent new approaches to AI, new approaches to machine learning that have other types of properties. And in fact, I, um, at MIT, a number of research groups are, are really um, aiming to push the boundaries to develop solutions that can be deployed on safety critical systems and on edge devices. This is very important and there, are re there is really excellent progress. So I am very bullish about uh, using machine learning and AI in safety critical applications. So I would say I agree with one thing that uh, Stuart uh, said, but also with a lot of the, the observations Jan shared. Several of you independently say that we need new architectures, new technical solutions. So to wrap up, uh, I would love if, if some of you want to share just very briefly uh, some um, thoughts on this. Like, what kind of new architectures do we need that are more promising for, to make it the kind of AI that complements us rather than replaces us? Do you want to go first, Jan? Sure. Yeah, I can't really uh, give you a working example of it because this is, uh, this is work in progress. But these are systems that are goal-driven. And at inference time, they have to satisfy fulfill a goal that we give them, but also satisfy a bunch of guardrails. And so they cannot be, uh, they're planning their answer as opposed to just producing it autoregressively one word after the other. And uh, they, uh, they cannot be jailbroken uh, unless you, you hack into them or things like that. So this would be an architecture that I think would be considerably safer than the current types that we are talking about. And those systems would be able to plan and reason, remember, perhaps understand the physical world, all kinds of things that current LLMs cannot do. Um, so future AI system would not be on the blueprint that we currently have, and they will be controllable because they'll be objective driven. Liquid networks, which are brain inspired by uh, the brains of small creatures, and uh, they are provably causal, uh, they are compact, uh, they are interpretable and explainable, and they can be deployed on edge devices. And since we have these, these great properties, we also have control. I'm also excited about connecting some of the tools we're developing machine, in machine learning with tools from control theory. And so, for instance, combining machine learning with tools like barrier net uh, and control barrier functions uh, to ensure that the output of a machine learning system is safe. The actual technology that I think is most important is social technology. It is very tempting for tech people, tech nerds like all of us here on this panel to try to think of solutions that don't involve going through humans. But the truth is, is that the world is complicated and this is both a political and a technological problem. And if we ignore the technical and the social side of this problem, we will fail, reliably so. So it is extremely important to understand that techno-optimism is not a replacement for humanism. Great. And so let's thank our wonderful panel here for <laughs> provoking us. And I hope you also take away from this that even though they don't agree on everything, they all agree that we want to make tools that we can control and that complement us, and that they're all very nerdy and have exciting technical ideas for doing this. Thank you all. <laughs>